Hey, Achim from Inner Space Explorers with the second part of the Draeger ray conversion. So I thought a while of um, showing you the actual work on it, but then as you may realize, I'm in my uh, boat workshop because the little workshop that you know in the basement, the horror shop is completely full with projects. Um, so various boat stuff, diving stuff. Then there's a motorbike from 48 sitting around. So I was a bit afraid of mixing up carburetor parts and rebreathers. And then you don't know if the motorbike doesn't breathe well or the carburetor in the rebreather, whatever. So I decided we do it nice and clean and do it here. And actually the conversion is so simple that I didn't really show you the work, but I will show you the finished product. And especially as I got quite a few comments on the first um, video and uh, where I presented the idea, I would like to discuss a little bit the various options and the pros and cons and why I in the end did what I did. So if you uh, saw the first video, I introduced quickly the three major possibilities and um, two of them included the original um, gas inlet, this box with the mass flow. And um, then I also thought about the option of putting a, a constant flow like a kiss style valve in it and in the end in the end i didn't do that there's two major reasons it's an basically brand new intact drag array and it kind of hurted me to destroy it or change things that i can't cannot reverse so um i left all the dragger parts untouched and just put them in the box so theoretically if I want to sell it or if I want to use it as a drag array, well, very unlikely, but still, that's doable. I didn't didn't do any harm on it. The second thing is, as the it's a it's a relatively big unit and it's normally uh, used with a five liter tank. I have plenty of gas compared to the classic oxygen rebreathers that usually come with a one or two liter tank. So the Draeger was designed, first of all, to provide you buoyancy compensator and provide a bailout system. So if you looked a little bit deeper into the ISE oxygen rebreather program, you saw that we recommend obviously to have some sort of open circuit bailout when you dive one of these units. And I always recommend a spare air. As useless as the unit may be in actual scuba diving, for a bailout from six meters, it's perfect. And you can store it in a pocket somewhere and it's not a huge hassle like carrying a stage, which would actually destroy the simplicity of the system. So I wanted to keep that. So if I would want to use a KISS driven, uh, a KISS style valve as a constant flow, I would have to use a first stage where the ambient pressure compensation is blocked off. And that means I cannot put a second stage on it, which means I destroy my possibilities for an onboard bailout, open circuit bailout. So that was basically my main reason of not doing that because I mean, it's a nice feature, but it's not something I need. All the oxygen rebreathers that I used before actually have just manual addition and that, that works fine for me. So I decided um, to keep the original parts original and not use one of these blocked off first stages, which basically uh, then made the decision easy. I just put a Scuba Bro Mark 25 uh, first stage on there which um, and then uh, worked a little bit on the hose routing which I'll show you in a minute um, when I put the tank on so there's a little bit of thought went into, into that um, and that gave me the option of putting an S600 second stage on there which I have on a necklace so if my rebreather has an issue I have an open, sec sec um, open circuit bailout right on the neck the gas addition now is also very simple. I just had a spare elbow. Um, I just went on the lathe, made a little part here, a connector. So again, no modification on the rebreather. I could take that out and just plug the mass flow unit back in. And that way, this is my oxygen feed. And um, then I have this uh, an aftermarket piece that's from Good question. I'll check that and put it as text in the video. Uh, so that's the oxygen addition. So the oxygen comes from the first stage right in here. And then when I press the button, I inject it straight in 
the system. So now a lot of people ask me like, yeah, on your YouTube channel, modifying a rebreather, and is this safe and all these things. Yeah, it is safe. Why is it safe? If you look into an oxygen rebreather, it's a plastic bag, a canister with lime, a gas tank, and a knob that you can press that injects oxygen into the plastic bag. Not really rocket science. So this is a very, very nice professionally manufactured rebreather and I did not modify it. It doesn't do anything now that it didn't do before. Actually, I just simplified it a little bit more. Instead of a constant flow of gas pissing into my rebreather, I inject oxygen into the rebreather, which is exactly what every oxygen rebreather in the world is doing. I'm just not injecting it in some self-made plastic bag. I'm injecting it in a Draeger rebreather. And that is super simple, super safe. Um, actually, it's all manu uh, professionally manufactured parts. I didn't do anything myself except for this, for the inlet, which uh, it's not a moving part. It's a thread in a piece of plastic. Um, yeah, also no rocket science. And uh, therefore, yeah, this is absolutely safe. In the next video, I will dive in. I will show you how it works and how it performs. And um, if I'm able to publish this video, then it obviously worked. So if you don't get the third part of that, then yeah. Good. So let's have a little bit of a look into detail on what I did, why I did it, and how that looks. And therefore, I'll just attach the tank. So tanks installed and now let's have a look a little bit about the, the hose routing. You can see that I put these two adapters here, actually three adapters. The reason that I didn't want the hoses to make these loops here is a little bit the streamlining. I just want it nice and tight. I mean it's not the rebreather that you would use for any penetration dives or whatever but nevertheless I don't I want my gear nice and tidy and everything cleaned up so that's the reason I came up with these is that an additional failure point yes of course it is a failure point but I guarantee it will not kill me if one of these o-rings blow off it will bubble a little bit and I will make my long ascent to the surface which if I ascend with one meter per minute will be six meters plus my open circuit payload and I think I will survive that so that's absolutely Doable. The reason I'm I'm going back to that from time to time is because I got so much feedback. I was like, Ooh, safety and yeah. So even on the Kiss rebreather that we use, even for 100 meter dives or deeper, um, on the first stage I have these for better hose routing. It's not an issue. It's well maintained gear. You change these O-rings from time to time. It's not that they are spinning constantly and you have friction on the O-rings. They just screw it in. They don't move. It's just to have a better hose routing, so that's not an issue. So what do we have? This is the oxygen outlet that goes straight here. Hose is um, protected between the, the tank and the, the scrubber. Comes out here, then they have this nice little attachment here, which actually brings it forward. You'll see it when I put it on. And then from there, the hose goes up here. Probably have to uh, experiment a little bit with the hose length here, but that seemed to be fine yesterday. Goes back here and in the inlet here. And then the other thing we have is our SPG, which also goes up here. They provide this perfect ring here. So I bring it up over my shoulder. I will show you the, the other side in a, in a moment. Then we have the inflator hose that also goes up here. And then we have, that's actually this um, braided hose here that also goes along the tank underneath the scrubber, comes up here and leads to the second stage. So that's basically the hose routing. So we close that. And then there's this nice feature with this Velcro. Um, that actually allows me to cover these hoses. So that's all nice and packed. 
and we have a nice system. So from the front now, you can see this. This is the inflator hose. I mean, it could be a bit shorter, but I mean, for the oxygen rebreather, that's fine. I have my SBG here right in front of me. And then I have my, that's actually quite good the way it is. Um, so this is my, the hose for the necklace. And here, and actually now you can see that the hose routing is pretty perfect. I have my inlet. So I'll put that on for a moment now, so you see um, how this looks when, I, when I'm wearing it. So I have my SPG here, doesn't dangle around, it's nice and stored. If I have an issue, I have my open so This is here, there's no hoses sticking around, making big loops or anything, so it's all nice and tight. And I think it's a pretty comfortable rig. And I'm looking forward to jump in the water and see how this works and take you with me on that dive. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, put them in the comment section. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you subscribe, hit that little notification bell. And um, other than that, I'm happy to see you in the next video. Stay safe. Thanks for watching.